Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Well, we were not expecting this snow last night. It wasn't even in the forecast. And it's messing a bit with my plans for today's video, but I'm going to soldier on. The topic today is getting a bit of a jump start on planting things in the vegetable garden. I know you're probably thinking, how is that even possible with snow on the ground? Now I realize some of you are in a warmer climate, so this won't apply, and I apologize for that, but you might find this interesting anyway. I live in Spokane, Washington, which is in USDA hardiness zone six, but where our garden is, is in a microclimate, and that puts us more at zone 5B. Our last frost in the spring is typically around the middle of May. I usually plant my lettuce seeds outdoors in the garden around April 10th, but this year I'm trying to get a jump start on the season and I want this fresh lettuce as quickly as possible. So what I did is at the end of January, I started some lettuce seeds indoors. Now at the end of my February 28th garden column, I suggested to folks that they should plant about a dozen lettuce seeds indoors in preparation for doing something like what I'm going to do today. So if you got your seeds started, you are underway. Now, obviously, in order to start plants earlier than usual outdoors, you're going to have to give them some sort of protection. And you have three options available to you. The first option is to make yourself some cloches. Now, the word cloche is French, and it means bell. It refers to the bell-shaped glass covers that many European gardeners use to cover plants early in the season to give them some frost protection. You can make your own cloches very simply by taking some gallon-sized milk jugs, cut off the bottom, and be sure to hang on to your top because that's going to be very important. Your second option is to make what's called a low tunnel. And basically, all you have to do is have some hoops. We've made these out of old recycled drip tubing that's half an inch in diameter. And you put the hoops over the bed or area that you want to start something early. Ugh. I'm gonna have to do that one from the other side. And then what you're going to do is cover it with a sheet of clear plastic. Make sure you weight it down so it doesn't blow off. And what you're doing is you're increasing the heat in the bed to warm the soil. And in this case, I need to melt the snow. <laughs> and your third option is to get a cloche system. Now, last year, you might recall that I used this system from Gardener's Supply. It's called the row cloche system. And it's a very heavy duty plastic. It has little vents in the lid that you can adjust. And this worked really well for me, but by the time I got it last year, it was a little bit late, so I didn't get as much of a start as I would want. So here's how it works. It comes in different sections. You can buy a kit that has two ends and two links, or you can buy extra sets of these middle parts so that you can have a really long row. And what I'm going to do, since I know I want to plant my lettuce right here, <laughs> is I'm going to put it in place today so that I can melt this snow and start warming the soil. And that should be enough space to get a nice little lettuce patch going. The other thing it comes with is small stakes that go into holes on the sides and what I'm going to do is put a few in as best I can because this ground is probably frozen, but I just want to make sure this doesn't blow out of place. And then I think for starters, because I really want to warm things up, I'm going to close all the vents so that no heat escapes. If you're going to go with the milk jug cloches, I would put them into place right away. And if you can't push them down into the soil, I'd use a board or a brick or something just to hold it in place so it doesn't blow away. Leave the cap on because you want as much warmth inside as possible. If you're going to go with the low tunnel method, 
put it in place, anchor down that plastic to generate some heat underneath. But everything needs to be done a few days ahead of time to get the soil warmed up. It's been four days and I've been watching the soil temperature both in the bed that has the cloche over it and this neighboring bed. And first of all, as you can see, the soil is frozen solid. We've got this compost thermometer, it's also called a soil thermometer, and we mainly use it to test the inside temperature of our compost pile. But this has been very interesting. So the minimum temperature that you can really be safe about growing lettuce is 40 degrees. So first of all, it's I just can't even test this, but obviously, well, let's see, I went down a little. Let's see what temp it is. It's dropping down towards 30. <laughs> no surprise there. So let's test the soil in the other bed. So here's the cloche I showed you the other day. And what I've been doing is each day I come out, I open the vents and measure the soil temperature just down through it. First of all, I want to point out, I can go down it all the way to there. So soil is definitely not so cold. And if I go up into the top couple inches, it is definitely over 40 degrees. Let's test this one. Right at 40. And you might think this is silly that I'm going down here, but this hedge casts a shadow on the bed in the afternoon, and so it makes me wonder if it might be cooler on this end. And actually, it's been the same for each reading. So I took my trowel and I just kind of ran it through the soil, and it actually looks pretty decent. It is wet, I will say that, but not sopping wet. So think we're okay. Now what I'm going to do is err on the side of caution and just plant maybe six plants, give them a few days, make sure they're doing okay with the overnight lows. It's pretty cool to be planting so early, <laughs> but I might be taking a risk. I might still be a tad on the early side. These poor little seedlings are more than ready to be out in the garden. So I would space your plants a good eight to 10 inches apart Or if you're doing the milk jug cloches, you might do closer to about a foot apart, depending upon how much you space them. That's nice to get dirty fingers again. <laughs> I'm so excited to look at these plants and realize we're going to be having fresh salads in two or three weeks, way earlier than usual. Now I can put the cloche back together. I'm going to put all the little pins back in to hold it down. So now what happens? What I'm going to do is close the vents the first few days just to make sure that they're nice and warm in there. And if we have a nice surprising warm day, I will be venting them by opening the cloches, but I'll always close the vents at night. Now if you're using the milk jug cloches, you're going to want to put the lids on in the evening 
and take them off during the day if the weather is nice and warm. If you're using the low tunnel approach with the hoops and the plastic, on warm days you're going to want to open the ends of the tunnel to make sure that your poor little plants don't fry and then close them up in the evening again. Now if we get a really cold snap, which I'm hoping we don't, but if we do, I'm going to have a cloth paint tarp nearby that I'm going to throw over the top of this in the evening. So for me, this is really an experiment because this is way earlier than usual. You know, I started these seedlings at the 1st of February, which I realize is ahead of you, but I wanted to have some seedlings to plant for this video. So I'm going to see how they do. I'm hoping they do all right. And I do hope that you're going to try this too. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you next week. And before I go, this is just a friendly reminder that I have a brand new book coming out, The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. I wrote it for all levels of gardeners, from beginners to master gardeners. This will help you identify both the good bugs and the bad bugs in your garden and provide you with all sorts of methods for dealing with the bad ones using effective organic controls. This is going to be such a great resource for all gardeners. If you pre-order it now, you will receive special bonus content that is not in the book and can't be found elsewhere. It contains my best tips for growing your favorite veggies and some you might not have thought of. All you have to do is order it from your bookstore or preferred online source and email me your order confirmation. My email address is susan at susansinthegarden.com. Then I'll send you a link to the bonus content. This is a great deal, and thank you.